ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tunjo Fei show. Uh, I get no person than the activist poet, uh, AJ Daga Tola. Daga Thank you very much. Uh, extremely happy yeah. and excited to be here. Okay, I'll let him do his self intro. All right, it takes it from me. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Extremely excited to be here. A uh, very big thanks to all of the beautiful work you're doing out there. Um, literature, poetry, politics. Uh, and, and one of the beautiful things about today's social media is, is, is the fact that it, it, it creates a, an independent uh, ability and, and freedom, you know, to be free from the control of big business, which will not allow, you know, individuals like us and alternative views like us you know, to, to be placed in the open uh, uh, space, which uh, your media and uh, your activities are trying, you know, to break through and do for all of us. So once again, a very big thank you. As he has rightly pointed out, my name is AJ Dagatola. Uh, well, a socialist activist, uh, currently the General, Sec of, uh, General Secretary of uh, the Movement for Socialist uh, Alternative, uh, a poet uh, with a uh, lot of published collections and on published collection poets as well, uh, spoken word poet as well, uh, well, uh, with a particular interest in uh, reggae music and of course Afrobeat uh, as well. Uh, all germs and all uh, all tools and instruments which which to uh, continue uh, the protest culture, you know, and using all of this medium as well as writing, you know, uh, social commentaries and uh, political analysis of uh, uh, events. I'm also Thank a teacher as well, if, I, if you allow me to include that. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Thank you for your self intro. So we're already on the right path. You set the motions already. So you've uh, given us your background in poetry and in music. So I, I, I do know that you are a labor activist as well. You yes. survived uh, several imprisonments. We're going to get into all that as we dig into this. So what's really uh, introduced you or attracted you to music and poetry? Well, uh, let me say the, the background, it's uh, education and of, of as, as well as music. Uh, of course, my family background, my father, uh, who for me was my first uh, known activist in terms of his commentaries of views uh, and ideas. Of course, the, the classroom introduced me to literature uh, introduced me to Cyprian Quincy. Uh, we read, uh, uh, if I can remember, African Night Entertainment and Passport of Malamelia. Those were, for me, the first two books that introduced me to, to storytelling and, and literature. Of course, there was poetry uh, as rendered by J.P. Clark uh, and Wally Schoenka. All of those poems that were in the school syllabus uh, in the early 80s in uh, Nigeria. So if you ask me, one of my first loved poems was uh, a Night, uh, uh, Night Rain by, by J.P. Uh, JP Clark. And, and you could imagine the, the joy, you know, to meet J.P. Clark physically, you know, decades afterwards that experience to relate with him, to visit him in his house. And, and, and you, I, I can't begin to imagine that as small as I was in the 80s that my mind could ever have told me that I would meet the poet who wrote uh, that particular poem. So a combination of, 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 of the classroom uh, and a, a combination of music it, it, itself, because uh, my dad had uh, this uh, C90 cassette, uh, which had a uh, uprising inside A and survival inside B, you know, and we rounded up our secondary school uh, in 84 with practically nothing to do than, you know, to play music, play around, and, and that was the music I kept playing in-house and day in and day out. And, uh, and for me, they, be, they, they, they began to lay the foundations for my attraction, not just to reggae music, but even to Rastafari, I say, as a social religious philosophy, you know, at that, uh, at that 
uh, at that particular uh, stage. And, and, and I've made clear to people, I'm not sure I will ever have met Marxism if I didn't meet Rastafari, you know, earlier, you know, through reggae music, even though I know there are, there are contradictions in this uh, social system from the point of view of religious uh, acceptance of Rastafari, uh, which again proclaims God, even though in another name, Nanja, uh, proclaims God in an African philosophical uh, uh, framework and 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 that you know Marxism also makes quite clear that ultimately you know humans are architects of their own destiny and they must you know be willing to seize you know the reins of history you know if anything will be changed if anything will be what will be uh, will be transformed so uh, the point is to say that education uh, Bob Marley. Of course, Fela came in later, you know, to, to provide my full-rounded uh, education on the basis of providing a philosophical framework of, uh, of ideas in terms of understanding that things were wrong in the kind of society uh, we live. But interestingly, this is the 21st uh, century. If one was to examine the currents of the social economic contradictions when, when we were growing up, they were not as intense as, as, as this. But as late as 80s, Sonia Dea sang, you know, Ishu Di Wingo, Agbado, Jera, Loja. These were songs we heard early in the 80s too, you know, growing, uh, growing up. So all of these contradictions has existed. So it would not be correct to say that uh, a Naira in the 80s was less than a dollar in the 80s was less than a naira and today it's close to 600 naira uh, that the social contradictions that our parents or working class people from working class background that they confronted at that material moment on time was not as worse as they were of course it's more intense the contradictions are more worse off uh, uh, than today but ultimately the contradictions remain and they they will they'll get deeping they'll get worsened from where we are all right. Thank you for that insight as well. Now we know your background, uh, what interests you that makes you come into music and poetry. That's fine. So uh, I did notice uh, during my research and all of that, and even just now what you mentioned, you, I, if, I tend to want to believe that you are a Pan-Africanist, right? That's correct. Um, you, you are not entirely wrong. But then, too, I've pointed out that I'm a Marxist, and, and, and that philosophy doesn't uh, preclude the necessity for Africa to unite, but it, it puts the... the Sorry, the Rastaman. Class first. Yeah. Sorry, it Rastaman. puts the working class first and form, uh, foremost, and, and, and workers everywhere. You are in the UK. Your labor from where you are is extremely important. The, 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 the human variant is a universal variant. This is uh, not just, to say that there are no differences. Just hold on, right about okay. Sorry, <laughs> so we, uh, we're still on the track. So what I was driving at is, I didn't notice that most of your inspiration tends to be uh, Angel from Angel, uh, from which other philosopher, uh, Karl Marx. Yes. Most of them are foreign philosophers. So does it mean there's no attraction on the African continent or even some other black, uh, you, say like Fran, Fran uh, Fanon? I think I don't think you are correct when you you narrow ideas, you know, to that type of definition. It was Fela who said that uh, uh, in his VIP performance in uh, in in, uh, in Brussels said, "If you say I'm white, I'm wearing European dresses, we will need a symposium to clarify who was the first person that put on, you know, the idea that human beings must be clothed." We, we, we must break beyond this attempt to limit our universality. Africa has contributed enormously to human civilization, to all strands of ideas and philosophies, to all, all sectors of the economy. In fact, in medicine, in transport, he mentioned that we laid all of these foundations. So if some others have topped up this ladder now, does it preclude us from benefiting entirely from all of the best of what of those ideas? We, use, we, we are using this medium today now. What is European in this medium? It, it, it is a means of communication, and that is my attitude to, to, uh, to ideas. It, it doesn't 
changes the fact that I, I was born on the African continent and that my skins are black. But also, it doesn't also change the historical fact that Africa gave birth, gave home to the first human beings. What can be greater? If Africa gave birth to humanity, whatever amounts, what, whatever human ideas comes on board at any point in time of, of human history, it's still our product. And, and this is the type of perception from which I, 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 I view it. But more importantly is that what type of society are we thinking that we are going to build? The ideas of Marx are not ideas that were just studied on the basis of clear European history. In fact, capitalism will not, have, will not even have emerged without the slave trade, without the European slave trade. America will not exist today without all of the enormous free labor that was appropriated and accumulated on the basis of the slave trade, which laid the basis for European and American civilization. So if Marxism comes on top of all of those ideas, shouldn't we be beneficiaries of all of those ideas in terms of moving the African society forward, in terms of moving humanity uh, forward. So I think it is within that context to say that, yes, you are correct. I am a Pan-Africanist from the point of view that Africans are contributing, continuously contributing towards the ideas of how humanity you know, will live uh, in a better space. I am human, first and foremost, before I am Pan-African. And on the basis of my humanity, everything that is human, and, and Max used that phrase appropriately. Nothing human should be alien to any other human being in any part of what of the world and of the universe. I like that. Okay, that there's nothing to contest in that. That's fine. Uh, that's accepted. Okay, I'd like to go be more direct now at this juncture. In your poem, I deceive, uh, I deceive rather, sorry. You lamented about the people who did nothing, but they are getting everything. So do you think uh, the problem we have in Nigeria or Africa as a whole is a sort of what we call monkey, they walk, baboon, they chop? Is that you, you, you have appropriately, you know, characterized it. The truth today, not just in Africa, indeed, in, in, the, in the whole of the universe, is that um, we have a tiny few individuals who sit on top of the entire collective resources of the universe, and um, they are appropriate these resources for themselves and they deny and condemn the whole lot of all of us to the kind of lives we live. Uh, science and technology has got into the stage that uh, it has appropriated all of the best ideas uh, possible. But the truth is that a vast majority of human beings can't assess all of these resources. If you look at the statistics in relation to Nigeria, and indeed the entirety of the new colonial world, you'll be amazed if we should be living in this type of life. I told you that I wanted to hone the gen, the generator set, you know, as if I knew, you know, the moment I just owned it, you know, there is power outage. In today's world where within the resources of Nigeria, there are six, seven, eight alternative sources by which power could be generated. But you know how society operates, how capitalism operates, how capitalism in the new colonial world operates on the basis of primitive accumulation, on the basis of destroying the role of the state as an organ that can appropriate the resources of society and use all of those resources to develop all of the means of what of production. We are told that the state has no role in development of the means of production. But all of these doctrines, as put forward by the IMF and World Bank, you know, continue to remain the basis of the underdevelopment of this country, continue to grant a few people the possibility to control all our resources. And I'll just give one clear practical example. The steel industry in Nigeria, which was developed. Interestingly, by even a, a, a capitalist-oriented regime, beginning from the Shehu Shagari regime, which laid the foundation for steel. When Obasanjo returned back to power in 1999, he lamented, you know, how all of this had been appropriated. But he became the person who sat over the deregulation or the destruction of the entire possibility of steel industrialization in Nigeria. Now, how do you begin to talk of industrialization without steel and electricity? So, yes, you are correct. We see them, and but painfully, the ruinally think we don't see them. We don't, we don't know what is happening, that the working masses do not know what is happening. But every day in, day out, on the basis of their policies, on the basis of their programs, resources of this country are being appropriated by a tiny few, 
they render the entire 200 million others of Nigerians into the huge contradictions that we have found ourselves. At no time do you do you have a vast army of unemployed youths. The not as we speak of, it's, it's, it has become a war, a theater of, of, of armed groups in Zamfara, in the northeast, in Bono, and in, 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 in all of the rest. At no time in the history of this country do you have millions of young boys with practically nothing to do, with no basis to look into the future and say that there is something that they can hold on to. And this is what has given rein to all of the alternative, destructive ideas in the marketplace as well to move this country forward. There are those who push the question of secession to break up the Nigerian state as it is currently. And there are those who run various alternative ideas who will tell you that our problem is because we are sinners. Ordinary working people have committed no sins. The sins that have placed us, that has placed this country here, is the crimes committed by members of the ruling elite. And nothing has changed from 1960 till date. So people should not use religion as a philosophy. And, and this is why when people use their Bible or their Quran as a basis of providing political philosophy to resolve these contradictions, they miss it completely. What is at stake is it's about how human beings will assess the basic necessities of existence. It's about iron, bread, and electricity. And the Bible and Quran does not provide any theoretical persuasions in relation to that. They're about how a modern society will be built. And all of these issues are about how the economy will be developed, how steel will be developed, how electricity will be provided. Of course, the IMF and World Bank says that this can only be possible on the basis of private ownership. But when they say this, they say this to allow China, Europe, and America to continue to do dominate the space. They do not want competitors. They do not want a new African industrial country on the industrial block to compete with them. But painfully, all of our rulers, you know, buy in to all of this false philosophy that will continue to undermine the underdevelopment of the African continent. Wow. All right. Um just before I move to my next question, it, it occurred to me that you've been in and out of prison uh, due to no making of yours, especially during the Abacha era. Did you at any time actually attempt to seek redress at the Oputa panel? Or do you think the Oputa panel was a, a charade? Or what, or what, what really happened? Uh, no. That's uh, good. Not, because we, we don't think that we should make a a, a virtual or a claim out of all of those because the contradictions are still here. The huge contradictions. There are those who will look back to their bachelor era and tell you that things are worse off today. So whatever pains anybody will have gone, more sacrifices are needed, you know, to be able to take us out of. So the, what redress? The redress that needs to be to be sought is how this country must begin. Nigeria has not started as a country for its millions of people. So to think that as an individual, uh, that one was arrested, one was detained, and that one should seek for redress for all of this, it, it solves nothing because the contradiction remains. There's a need to provide the necessary political education. There's a need to reach out to the ordinary Hausa man, Hausa working youths on the street, that they are not any different from Yoruba youths, that they are different from Igbo youths. All of us from this over 371 ethnic nationalities in this, we are not different. Our expectations about life are not different. People want to be able to have a place to live. They want to be able to grow their children, get married, grow their children, and ensure that their future is protected. So our, our, our basic desires, unmindful of the language we speak, unmindful of the religion of God we, we choose to believe, or people like us don't believe, there are no fundamental difference around us. And I think it is it is so that idea, it is so that tax and assignment that we must spend more energy. We must try to because the ruling elites continue to have their way in this country because they succeed con constantly and continuously to divide the working masses against against themselves. But we we mustn't give up because in the midst of all all of these contradictions, there is no way forward for the human beings, for the humanity living in the space of Nigeria if ordinary people do not band themselves together. And we have enough history to tell ourselves that a change is possible in this part of the head. Ten years ago, there's the Occupy Nigerian movement. It was an insurrection. No matter whatever 
millions of Nigerians were on their foot, were on their feet on the street. Interestingly, that movement was so strong that there was a wave of returning Nigerians back at that period, a, a, a decade, a, a decade ago. We can look into this movement and, and say that it was an inspiration. Of course, there was also the massive struggle against military dictatorship, tied around the struggle against the annulment of the June 12th. Then how do you also characterize the massive uprising of youth against the NSAS last, uh, last year? All of these movements that I've pointed to, they provide the possibility that Nigerians can get themselves organized. Nigerians know that the ruling elites have failed them. Nigerians understand that it's only when we organize ourselves, but that organization must learn must arm itself specifically with an idea, must put forward a clear political program. And that program can be the program of the rich because the rich have their country, Nigeria, currently. They are satisfied on the basis of the current of, of, of how these things, because members of the Bologna Club continue to benefit on the basis of the rottenness and continued destructions of the means of production uh, by members of the ruling and by their ruinous neoliberal economic uh, political philosophy. It is the ordinary working people that must organize themselves, organize themselves around an alternative idea. And that idea is that if we are allowed to employ the resources of Nigeria collectively, this country is rich enough to develop this country to ensure that every child who is a Nigerian is educated up to the highest level. I, I watched a video maybe some two days ago of the launch of the James uh, uh, Webb uh, telescope, you know, which is supposed to be the latest feature in science, and it's characterized to just be $10 billion. Nigeria, on the basis of the wealth of this country, we can do something even greater than that. But science here in Nigeria, has not kicked off. It will not kick off on the basis of the kind of ruling elites we have. When we have not resolved how to provide three basic meals for working class people and their families in all parts of what of the country. These are the contradictions that confront Nigerians day in and, and day out. And we are not going to get out of all of this if we do not confront, if we do not get ourselves organized. And like I've said, we can draw inspiration from the struggle of the mass of the working people. A revolution is possible in this country. A revolution organized by the mass of the working people that, that wants to make ordinary, that wants to make politics, no longer for billionaires, but for ordinary people. Nigerians in our millions must come into politics with a clear program that Nigeria, a country is possible for all of us. And, 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 and I think, so to, to leave all of this and say you are seeking redress for individual pains will be ignoring the bigger picture because the contradictions are getting worse day in and out and uh, and day out. Wow. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, does that mean uh, from all of uh, this issue you're raising, as also also as a labor activist, do you think this is part of the reason why Nigeria has failed till date to implement the thirty thousand? Naira minimum wage. Why do you think, uh, is it the same elitism that is causing the delay in doing that? Well, um, I interestingly, I, I must say the labor bureaucrats, well, I, I prefer to use that word, uh, it was Leon Trotsky who, in one of his writings in, in 1938, what he referred to as a transitional program, who pointed out that the crisis plaguing humanity and you know, he, is, he is correct and valid up to this moment. He's the crisis of the absence of a clear revolutionary leadership on the part of the labor leaders to fight concrete leadership for the issues of what of the mass of the working people. We say this because, and those who say Marxism has outlived its days, you know, don't understand their history. Using Nigeria, because we are talking about Nigeria, the working masses, through their labor, through their unions, have a national platform that cuts across all ethnic and religious divides. They are the only organ and organization that can contend nationally with the ruling elite. But painfully, like Trotsky pointed out, the labor bureaucrats no longer see an alternative to capitalism. They no longer see the working masses. And of course, all of these misreadings are part of the misinformation that was begun by the Thatcher uh, Reagan regime following the collapse of the Soviet Union. 
the fall of the Berlin Wall and, and, and all of the risks. And uh, socialism has been characterized as a failed system. But interestingly, we must point out that what failed in the Soviet Union remained an experiment. What failed in the Soviet Union, like Trotsky pointed out, was a, was a bureaucratic Stalinist state. And when I use that word Stalinist, maybe I should break it down to, to, to mean that, uh, yes, a section of the leadership of the Communist or Russian Communist Party became the state. Democracy was stifled. Of course, if you return back to the Lenin regime, some of these programs were taken in place, but they were not policy programs. They were emergency programs that had to be implemented on the basis of the civil war situation to defend the revolution. But the Stanley regime that took over, you know, transformed those policies into doctrines. And on, the, on that basis, working class democracy was bearded. You know, uh, the doctrine of socialism in one country was introduced. And on that basis, you know, the bureaucracy and the distortion in relation to the ideas of socialism emerged. But if we were to even return back to common native intelligence, a broom in his bunch is stronger than an individual. The collective resources of society employed <laughs> mercy of the betterment of the whole of society will appropriate more results than any individual. What can, be, what can be richer than the collective wealth of a society than an individual? So I, I even leaving all of the details of Marx and Engels in their ideas, we should return back to our daily existence. We are Africans. We are still very much closer to nature. You know, and in close in and being closer to nature, you can study the letter prints of nature. It was angels in the letters of nature that pointed out that Marxism or socialism is it's, 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 it's not a, a clearly human creation. It is in the letter print of nature. There are opposites, and these opposites must collectively work together, must struggle together to move from the in ordinary parlance, from, from thesis to antithesis, from antithesis to what, to synthesis for progress and development to what, to take place. And it is the working class that constitutes this antithesis because society, modernity, is not possible outside of developing the means of production. I don't know of any other theory of how society or humanity will be developed outside of developing the means of production in all key sectors. So the, the, the working class must be at the arts of driving this society, assessing and using the collective wealth of society as a basis of developing those means and meeting the needs and mass of what of all of the working people. Unemployment can be solved, can, 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 can cease to exist in a place like Nigeria today. In fact, when I mention the Soviet Union, I'm going too far. We should return back to 1979 to 1983. We had a second republic here in Nigeria. We had the Awolowo regime, the UPN, which ruled over five states. Somebody like me who was born in Lagos and went to school in Lagos, you could still point all of those indices on the basis of even a social democracy. Jack Conde and Awolowo were not even rounded revolutionary socialists, but on the basis of the idea that the states can play a progressive role in development. They invested in education. They invested in health. They invested in housing. You can imagine if that process had continued, if the Buhari regime had not taken over in 1983, in December 31, 1983, and that process had continued. Of course, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is masses like me that also argue that those programs were not ultimately sustainable on the basis of a capitalist program. But they are indication of what is possible with a rounded socialist, public-oriented workers' democracy in full, uh, in full practice. All right. Thank you. Uh, it's time for us to move a little away from politics. So let's come back a little to music. But then your music and politics are a bit intertwined, so there's no way we'll still come back to politics. So uh, in your song, I Hate This Country, why hate? I think you will agree with me, uh, Rastaman, the word hate is very strong. AJ Nagatola, why did you use the word hate against your own country? Uh, well, I don't think I, I will ever use that against my country. But the truth is that we, if we do not learn to hate the country we're currently living, we cannot begin to want to love the country we should live in. 
This is not our country. This country I live in is not our country. A country that is owned by some few individuals. The rest of us are, are, are objects in the eyes of members of the Bologna Club. We are heading to 2023 and they are all busy. <laughs> you know, you know, brandishing who will, who will survive or who will take over from the Buari regime, who will take over the president, who will take over the presidency in the midst of all of the emerging contradictions. They, they are not, nobody is offering any clear alternative into resolving all of the contradictions. It's still the same program of the IMF. So we must hate this country. This country that I refer to as being hate, I do not hate Nigerians. I do not hate even members of the ruling elite. I hate the ideas and philosophy by which they continue to govern this country. By which, because they, informed, they, they it was Babangida who said that there is no alternative to, to the ideas of capitalism. And, and you are telling us that because if you don't hate that idea, you wouldn't begin to think that there is an alternative. We all subscribe to this philosophy. We endorse it. We allow them. In our thinking, we think there is no alternative. When you go down on your knees and pray that God should help us out, you are, you are saying that there's no, that we are incapable as humans to envision and struggle and put forward an alternative to the ideas of the Babangidas, to the ideas of the Obasanjos, to the ideas of the Abachas and the Buaris, or to the ideas of the Tunumbus and the Namdikalus. There is an alternative. And that alternative does not necessarily demand that I must love the idea. I hate, I hate neoliberal capitalism. I hate the idea that this system only allows a few people to dominate. So the country I hate is a country that, we, that has been fashioned by members of the ruling elite from 1960 to the date. And in that hatred is the possibility of a new country. It's in the possibility of the mass of the working people uniting, not seeing them, seeing themselves as distinct as members of the Bologna Club. Now, if you go through that song appropriately, I did point out that uh, it was these same people that murdered Ken Sarwiwa. They murdered Delegiwa. They are murderers. Are you asking me to love them? They are murdering working class youth on the street, day in and day out. 20 October 2020, working class youth were murdered, shot on the streets. In the 21st century, they were welding their flags. So are, are, are people asking Nigerian youths to love these murderers? And this murder has continued. They have appropriated the instrument of the state, and they are using these instruments of the state to put Nigerians down. They are making a peaceful discourse of alternative ideas impossible. Political parties have been deregistered. There is a Socialist Party of Nigeria. We have, had, we have had to battle a case up to the Supreme Court. Even when we won in the lower court, we won in the Court of Appeal. INEC, which is a, you can imagine it, INEC, which is an electoral body, is appealing against the right of Nigerians to organize themselves freely and peacefully in a political, in a political, in a political party. So this is my hatred, and this is what I'm calling on working class youths, whether they are not us. Our hatred should not be because we are not Hausas, or we do not speak the same language, or we do not come from the same bed. Because today's development, today's basis of our society will be developed and will progress. It's not on the basis of any language. It's on the basis of clear quality ideas. And the ruling elites are not divided, whether they are Igbos, Awusas, uh... I think we're having a freeze there. Just... Kalu in the night will go to a Tunumbu. Having a... Okay. Yeah, yeah, here comes the man. All right, uh, let's just uh, move to the next uh, stage. Uh, at this point, we need to take a little interlude whenever we have a musician on our show. Question. We ask them to give us a little music. So, Rastaman, over to you. A little song. We take that as an interlude. Okay. <laughs> 
think is having a little issue with his camera. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Take your time. It's okay. I'm good. Yeah. I I can't see you though. Your camera is not on. Okay. It's on. I, I, I can't see your face. No. You can't see my face. No. Your picture is on, but we can't see you. Well, in any case, yeah. Okay, better now. Okay, so just eat, uh, you know, eat the cord. Let's let's get some new uh, some vibe to at least chill a little from the maybe you know political. Yeah. Uh, I I have some new songs that I'm working okay. on, which um, I, I think I should begin to share with uh, people. Um, this song is titled the. Uh, as long. Wow, that sounds nice. <laughs> as long as the people know see if do it. As long as the people, they walk in hand no no see salary at the monthly hand. As long, as long as the people, they suffer, no see if do it. As long as the pressure, people under pressure. As long as long as the people no see if we do it. As long as long revolution, 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 now revolution, revolution, revolution now revolution. Revolution, revolution now. Revolution, revolution, revolution now. Revolution, revolution. It takes no to oppression to make a revolution. It takes no to tribulation to make a revolution. But without getting organized, Without mobilizing, revolution, revolution, revolution now. No be mouth, revolution, revolution, revolution now. No be talk, organize, mobilize, put the people for street, unite the people together as one. Together has he won. Together has he won. Paparapa. Together has he won. Together has he won. And together, and together has he won. We know different. Aha. Talk the way we talk. Walk the way we walk. We know different. Where we born, skinny color, we know the fear. Together has he won. Together has he won. Paparapa, together has he won. And together has he won. Wow. It's a boom. <laughs> Are you people saying the rest of all? Okay, thank you so much for that uh, smooth delivery. And like I said earlier on, uh, there's no AJ Dagatola without politics. There's no politics without uh, reggae for AJ Tola. I think they're just uh, all rolling to one. Thank you for that beautiful delivery, Rastaman. Let's move on with our interview. So uh, earlier on, you were telling me about uh, the failed system of socialism in the USSR. She acknowledged yeah. to yourself, yeah. which I really like. Yeah. I like honesty. In that regard. So what made you believe that this will work for other climes? Because you don't want to be talking about Nigeria alone. Let's just make it even universally. Do you think it's a viable alternative? Uh, we, we, the truth is that the universe has enormous resources. Mm -hmm. and, the, and our numbers, our because human... I, sorry, just before you go on, because I was yeah. reading the book of uh, Miriam Makeba the other time. Yeah. And she was mentioning her experience in Guinea, you know, when she lived uh, with her secretary and all that, that you could not even run 
a, a boutique in Guinea, and we all know how Guinea was in those years, maybe even to this day, and like so many other countries, because people are not allowed to even uh, be industrial. Like our own people, Nigerian uh, Nigerians are very industrious people, which you acknowledge too. Imagine if a system of government now tell them you can't do anything by yourself. Does it really make sense? Or over to you again. Sorry for that no, interruption. Yeah. No, don't be sorry. In fact, not just the ex the Guinea experience, even the Nkroma experience. The Nkroma experience. Because we must we must look at all of these examples. We must even look at the Nyeri example, the attempt you know, to theoretically inform all of us that there is a variant of socialism known as African socialism, which he referred to as Ujama. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and within the framework of all of these ideas, I, I must point out that all of the variants and practice of what we have had of socialism, let's not even forget Sadi Barre, Somalia, you, you know, of one state, one party state dictatorship. Yeah. This we have of the distortion of the ideas of socialism that you had in the Soviet Union. And if we must understand the failure of these ideas in the Soviet Union, we must return back to the Soviet Union. We must return back to the events that occurred in the Soviet Union, you know, the, following the death of Lenin. But more particularly, two historical events, the failure of the 1918 German Revolution, which saw the killing of Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebich, you know, in, in, in Germany. Because what was Russia in 1917? That is one fact people ignore. When Marx and Engels put forward their ideas, they didn't say that socialism will emerge from a backward Russia. They had looked forward to Europe, to America, where capitalism had already developed. This line is frozen. He did talk about earlier uh, the challenges uh, it is to connect from back. Yeah, I was saying to my viewers that you were actually saying about these technical issues that are likely to happen, like a prophet. So, but it's all right. We'll carry on. Yeah, go on. So, so, we, so we, 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 like I was, I was trying to point out, I must return back to those events and, and try to understand what happened in the Soviet Union. The failure of those revolutions, most especially the 1918 revolution, then there was China in 1927, even though by then the bureaucracy had gradually began to consolidate itself. But the socialist revolution in Russia occurred in a backward Russian state. It first had to attempt to develop the means of production. So the cultural level of the working people was low, and we must acknowledge this. The working class was weakest in Russia. It was low. But theoretically, too, even for a monarchy, for a country to become developed, those who should lead that struggle, we are no longer capable of leading it. And like Lenny and Coates pointed out, it was wrong for the working class to lead an insurrection against the monarchy, to not hand over power to the bourgeoisie, to say, come and rule, because the bourgeoisie were hands in glove. And we saw this in June 12 in Nigeria. Of course, Ab Abiola, even in the midst of the mass movement, was not willing to endorse a mass struggle to bring an end to the Babangida regime which explains why it continued to appeal to the crowd. They were not really interested. And it is a conscious act of the civilian wing of the ruling elite, of the bourgeoisie in the new colonial world. They cannot repeat the feat that the bourgeoisie did in France or in England, in Europe or in, a, in the US, in the new colonial world. And the reasons for this also are twofold, not just because they cannot repeat it, but because capitalism has developed to a stage where it makes that practically impossible. So it is on the basis of this contradiction that the, the Russian Revolution became isolated in the USSR. And that isolation provided oxygen for a bureaucracy to emerge on the basis of a working class that has had, that has had to sacrifice the greatest of its minds to defend the revolution. Don't forget. How many European countries invaded Russia to bring an end to the revolution? So it required the best of the working class to come forward to offer their best, their debts 
dying. And it was on the eve of all of this weariness that Stanley and Co. rose on the bureaucracy and began to offer, you know, distortions to the genuine working class ideas of what of socialism. How does socialism endorses the assassination of the leaders of the revolution? Trotsky was hunted down and killed in Mexico, you know, by the bureaucracy itself. The same people who led and made the revolution. So these are issues that people do not fully consider when they say socialism has failed. What has failed was an experiment. It was an experiment. It, it does not entirely distort it. It does not invalidate the scientificness of those ideas, that a pool of a people's resources is greater than any individual resources. But what we must raise is that when those pool of resources is gathered together, how will that resources be managed? And this is where the question of working class democracy comes into play. Of course, the industrial process has already introduced a democratic process to the industrial technological space. But why was this working class democracy not possible in Russia on the basis of the Russian Revolution? And I've, I've, I've pointed this out. If the revolution had occurred in a place like the US, which had a, an advanced working class, an advanced, an advanced democratic, an advanced conscious class, you know, an advanced culture as well, you know, democracy would have been instanter on the basis of that. So these are the issues for the failure and collapse. But it was this distortion that was defined as a model. It was on this basis of, of, of a model that has been critiqued. Uh, George Orwell has done, uh, Eric Blair, popularly known as George Orwell, has done a classic of this example, both in Animal Farm and in 1984, where he tried you know, to point out the distortion that the Stalinist bureaucracy you know, embarked uh, upon. When the animals made their revolution in chapter one, chapter two, it was the greatest of joy. But suddenly, the pigs, you know, Transform themselves to the entirety of what of the working class. He some does, are equal, some are more equal. All right. he, he does not, he, that does not now invalidate the idea that the working people can come onto their home. But it raises the idea of who controls the state. Who controls, let me offer four main points. Instead of an army, you now have an armed people. But the pigs maintained an army. The animals were not harmed. The, the pigs maintain an army and they could use that army because a state is a force. It's an, it's, a state is an instrument of coercion. We say the state is still necessary in a socialist state as an organ to put down you know, the capitalist class. But Marx and Engels point out that even the state must and, we, must, must and wither away. We can think of a human society where the police and the army will not be necessary. All of these are possible in terms of what? In terms of vision. And on the basis of the wood resources that's available on the face of, of, on the face of planet Earth, we can reorganize humanity, we can reorganize society in a way and manner that humanity will assess all of their basic needs. And we can begin to concentrate on a lot of other fantastic, I've, I've pointed out the James, the James Webb telescope. Humanity is faced with the huge tax of exploring space, we can create new sciences, new jobs, you know, new means of income. We can take humanity from planet Earth to other planets. This is just one star that we are still existing. Human, human beings on the Bay of Side, we are capable of, 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 of putting human beings in other planets, in other, not just other planets, in other stars. And yet. All right. Uh, a large, a large chunk of the human population are cut off and condemned to permanently continue to struggle to just eat and what and drink, and they are incapable of bringing the enormous talent the human mind possess onto the table as a basis to contribute to human civilization and uh, development. All right, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, we're beginning to come to an end of uh, the end of this show, so but we have to manage time. Uh, and there's one more. Uh, uh, I mean, main question I'd like to ask before we go into the lighter on a lighter note. Uh, education is one area you are so very passionate about. What do you see with this uh, proliferation of university in Nigeria? So many private universities coming up, and the standard seems to be eroding. What do you think is responsible for this, and what do you think is solution in in a capsule? If you can just say rapidly, it's a, it's a runabout way and manner 
He was also has consistently led a struggle for more funding for the public universities. But what the ruling elites are trying to do is to create, like you pointed out, qualifications of as many private universities as possible. Because they are not willing to fund the universities. They are not willing to provide the resources that will ensure that what is referred to higher education, university education, is actually fully taking place in Nigeria. You will be amazed how many working class parents are struggling to send their children to Kotonou, to Ghana, Accra, Legon University. And of course, members of the ruling elite no longer school year. <laughs> all of them are abroad. All of them are all of them are abroad. So what they are trying to do is to prize education out of the reach of working class families in this part of what of the world. And uh, interestingly, uh, it will further, you know, guarantee the continuous underdevelopment of Nigeria, because if millions of our youth are denied the best of university education that will arm them to be able to compete in ideas and use those skills as a basis to provide development you know, for the whole of society. You can begin to imagine the numbers of working class youths that are performing wonderfully well in all different parts of the universe outside of Nigeria. Take medicine, for example. We, we lost one of... Uh, a member of the family just uh, just today. And that allowed me an opportunity to be in the general hospital the past two, three days. You need, you need to see the, the agony. And if, if this is the picture in a place like Lagos, you can't even begin to imagine what the situation would be when you move out of Lagos, which is the epic center uh, of, of development in Nigeria. The numbers of doctors that are fleeing out of this country day in, day out, you know, the statistics are there for anybody to, to confirm. You know, why is it that the ruling elite think that, you know, all of these are not, are, are not important? Is it that we don't have the fund? And when they condemn all of us to private sector, and they are not ready, you pose the question of minimum wage data, and which I didn't uh, appropriately, uh, appropriately address. And, and they are not willing to, uh, to pay living wages to ordinary people. What they are saying is that if you are sick, you can no longer go to the hospital. And what that means is that more and more Nigerians are going to die in their millions in the, as we enter a year, a 2020 year. And if we go by our history, it is an eve of a general election. So 90% of Nigeria's 2022 budget will disappear into the pockets of members of the ruling elite, which they intend to use as basis to bribe themselves. Uh -huh. To negotiate with themselves, you know, to step down for themselves. So the working masses should practically not expect anything. The regime has announced last month that they want to increase the pump price of fuel, you know, to 300. And, and, and you can and you can begin to imagine Nigeria, the working masses suffer. We are not yet producing country. The ruling elites do not take the, the, the business of building a refinery for crying out loud. The science that produces that, that constructs a refinery is not rocket science. We can't, we can't construct new refineries. So we import, you export crude fuel. So if it's high on the international market, they must charge us the price for it here. If the prices is too low, there is shortage of revenue. The working masses must pay. <laughs> so both hands we are losing. So these are the enormous contradictions that confront us. I, I, I want to round up to say that, yes, it's a dismal, pic, it's a dismal picture. Uh, it's a new year, 2022. Are there basis for hope? I've answered that question. There is hope. There is a country in Nigeria. There is a country. Indeed, the whole of, African, the whole of the African continent as a country is still not enough. It's still not enough. Africa is the home of the universe. All races have settled in Africa, whether they are Europeans, Caucasians, or the Arabs. You mentioned them. They are on the African continent. So our hospitality has welcomed everybody here. Not just our hospitality. The good, vast resources and wealth of the African continent has attracted people from all walks of life into the African continent. And yet Africans live the worst of life. Millions of working classes want to flee from this continent. And this is the energy, the strength with which we need to reorganize this continent. I'm hopeful 
I fundamentally believe that Africa will not continue in this light. Change is on its way. Nigeria will not be a minus. A country like South Africa will also not be a minus. As the contradictions become more and more sharpened, more and more working class youth are going to come out to the fore and challenge the ruling elites. The Shores are doing it already here, posing the fact that, yes, there is an alternative to the ruling elites. Power must change hands from the members of the union, and the changing hands of power will not be on the basis of the language people speak or where they come from, but on the basis of the concrete programs and ideas, and those ideas around the ideas of public ownership, socialism. Sorry, Rasta, just another question comes to my mind. Please. Our society, and on that basis, develop society to be a better place for all of us. Yeah, you are a member of the uh, labor movement in Nigeria. Don't you think they are part of the problem you are talking about in terms of being a sellout? You, you, you are very correct. Um, the, uh, the labor bureaucrats are part of a problem. Uh, and unfortunately, all of them are killed around the Adam Sosho Mole example uh, to use the labor movement as an instrument, you know, to build a link into members of the ruling elite. So their leadership of the movement is to convince members of the ruling elite that they can serve them appropriately well. And on that basis, carrots are dangled. Carrots of appointment or political offices are dangled uh, to them. But in the midst of this betrayal is the basis that the, re the, re the trade unions can be reclaimed. And this issue of the failure of the betrayal of the labor leaders is not just in Nigeria, it's everywhere. In the in the universe, but a new generation of young people are coming into the trade unions. They are coming into the work for workplace. They are coming into the factory, and they can see the naked manner with which the bosses are exploiting them. Whether it's in China, it is India, it is in UK, it is in the US, it is in Australia, it is in Lagos, and they are they are going to be united on the fact that on the machine line, or mindful of where they are born or the color of their skin. They don't see themselves as different. They're exploited by the owners of the factories. And that becomes the basis by which a unity, a united, a, a united working class organization can be built. We must pose the necessary slogans for democratizations of the trade unions and the right of workers to move out of a trade union that their leaders are not representing them, to push forward the slogans that the automatic checkup dues should no longer be be withdrawn if such labor leaders are not representing them. And on the basis of that play, independently form new organizations that will also have legal rights to organize workers in their workplaces and begin to create the possibility that trade unions can play a very beautiful role in our survival into the future. Painfully, there is a so-called labor party that the labor leaders have refused to develop here. And the reason is clear, the, the labor leaders like the ruling elites, are scared of the working masses. But I've had, I've had cause to tell people that the French Revolution didn't need a preamble to get organized. The organization of the French Revolution commenced when the process, when the revolution itself had begun. History uh, is not something that fails to repeat itself. It's not impossible that that can also repeat itself. But we, individuals like us, Organization like ours, Movement for Socialist Alternative, a socialist group like the International Socialist Alternative Worldwide, and other socialist groups will continue to organize worldwide, will continue to provide the philosophical framework for young people coming into struggle to get themselves organized and, and move into the street, move into the factories, move into our campuses, and begin to get people organized and create a new possible organization for all of us. Thank you. Uh, hopefully that will make a difference in the long run. Uh, I'd like to know, do you relax at all? I, you know, away from all this agitation, the movement, the music, the poetry, how do you relax? Uh, you let, me, let me return back to Max and say that nothing no, human. Not just you. <laughs> no, nothing human is alien to any human. So that was Max's quote, nothing human is alien to me. So when you say relax, the human body is not a machine. It must, it must sleep. Uh, it must take time out from everything it does. Uh, but again, too, you are also very correct. There is a lot to do. There is a lot of reading to do. There is a lot of writing to do. There is a lot of uh, demand 
and painfully for all of us now, we carry the entire burden of the whole of the working class on our shoulders, waiting for the working class to come on its feet. Because not until they come on their feet, you know, this burden, this cross that we carry will continue to be more heavier on all of us. Yes, I want to relax. I want to be able to ignore all of these things. But like we also say here, Ojoku, you just see me. You know, so we don't hope to rest from what we do. We want to continue to do this as long and as long as was as possible. Thank you. That's also very, very deep and philosophical. You never seem to answer ordinary question in an ordinary way anyway. There must always be a twist to it. And I think that's a get all appearance we have to accept you uh, for that. Uh, so what's your word of encouragement for young people looking up to you as we round up this, uh, uh, this uh, session? The young people want to do music. Uh, sorry, one second, please. They want to do music, want to do poetry, or they just want to be into activism. So once uh, be, after you say that, uh, you then uh, please need to uh, close the show for us, not with music this time around, but with like uh, you also into spoken word. There's one of one of your poetry I really like, which is called "This Country." You performed that in South Africa, sometimes ago. Does it come to mind? <laughs> does it come to my immediately now? Not really. <laughs> it Not doesn't really. come to mind immediately now. But let's see, we'll do something. Um, okay. okay, just answer the question and do the freestyle to wrap, wrap up the show for us. <laughs> okay. let, let me say that uh, uh, on the shoulders of uh, this new generation of, of young people coming to the arena of a struggle, and not just in Nigeria, everywhere in the world. Uh, it's inspiring that school children of the age of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 led a massive movement, you know, for a green head, you know, across cities in what in, in, in Europe. And, and it's inspiring. So the NSAF movement is not, it's not just, it's just not an event in Nigeria. The Black Life Matters in the US and in so on. There are metaphors, yeah. Yes, uh, so a, a, a young generation of young people are coming to the arena of, uh, on the on the arena of struggle. Who no longer who have concluded that things cannot continue, planet Earth cannot continue under the control and direction of the ruling uh, what we, what Fela referred to as vagabonds, you know, who have taken over the entirety of the planet head, you know, for their selfish greed, you know, and but what they have not come to fully understand is the ideas and philosophy with which to appropriately prosecute a struggle and a successful struggle. And I think working class youth are going to learn, you know, from their bitter struggles and from the bitter experience. And some of the key lessons Workers, youths are drawing in Nigeria that the state is an armed state. You know, and that it, it frowns against any attempt against it. This is not, this doesn't mean that the conclusion that will be drawn is not organized against it. The conclusion that will be drawn from that key lessons of the killings at the at, at the Lekki, Lekki Toll Gate in 2020 uh, is, is that we need to build a stronger, more consistent movement of more of, of, of all of, 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 of all of ourselves in our millions and that no variance no section we must also begin to popularize the idea that the working class organization can democratically arm themselves to defend all protest movements already that is already happening in our various streets they have vigilante movements everywhere in every street corner people run their private, the members of the Bologna Club pay special funds for police and army officers to, to specially pro pro protect them. So they have their private army. Working class youth in their neighborhoods to do the same thing. So this idea is already there and it's going to grow. So the fact that when you organize a protest movement, the need for that protest is to develop its own protection against armed talks. We saw how the state organized armed talks to come and attack protesters in Abuja, in Benin, in Lagos, in all of this place. As we move into a new waves of struggle, working class youths are not going to fold their hands and think that they will allow thugs to shoot them on the street. There was a classic example in OAU under, uh, under the presidentship of uh, Adeola Shweton in the, in the early 1991, when the school management sent thugs and thugs to come and attack 
So, you know, peaceful protests being organized by students. And what did the, what did the, uh, at the last show, I told leadership, you know, you did then in 1991. They organized student resistance against it. So we're going to draw all of this working class lesson. But more importantly, is, is to tell all of these youths out, out there everywhere in the world is that a new universe is possible for all of us, where we can crisscross. In fact, how many minutes does it take from Lagos to Europe? It can... The sense and ideas and technology are already exist as fiction to ensure that transportation will be five or 10 minutes or in center from any part of the world to any part of the world. All of this science already exists, but the obstacle remains the vagabonds in power, uh, the beasts of no nations. And, and that's the classical name, they are beasts. They don't have any nation to themselves because they actually preside, they live in all of the countries. The Tudumbus, any minute can be in London, they can be anywhere. And they are members of the So members of the Bologna Club Worldwide are united. The whole world is their universe. So the whole world must also be our universe as working class. And it is from this angle that this attempt to box us to be Pan-Africanists, to think that when Arabs are in struggle that they are not of interest to us, cannot work. In the kind of new universe we are thinking and thinking of, of, of building in the in the future. So we must tell working class users that they must read, they must study, they must return back to the classic, understand and study how movements have been led. Not just in Nigeria, working class struggles, beginning from the Chartist movement in Britain, you know, and all of the key lessons through the Industrial Revolution, through to the foundations of the trade unions, through to the general strikes. Through to the Russian Revolution, the Spanish Revolutions, we must appropriate all of the key lessons of all of these movements and use all of that as a basis to organize ourselves to move forward. A new universe is possible. And this new universe must be armed with an alternative ideas. And socialism, for me, is that idea today. But we must point it out that the Soviet Union is not an example of that socialist philosophy. Yes, Lenin and Co. built the Bolshevik organization to a certain extent. But like Trotsky himself had earlier criticized in 1906 in relation to how uh, the dangers of a one-party state, we must say that socialism cannot succeed. Socialism needs oxygen to succeed as a political... Society. Just like the human body needs oxygen, socialism needs working-class democracy to function effectively and successfully. We can't hand over the resources of humanity to individuals or to a single party to manage on behalf of society. When we do that, we have the classic animal farm situation. We must say that working class people themselves must control their resources democratically, must decide how resources of society are managed for their benefit and for the benefit of the whole of uh, uh, humanity. So all of this, are the possibilities for all of us in the coming uh, uh, future and to have a, a better world and a better universe. Excellent. AJ Tola, thanks for coming on the Tunji Ofei Show. It's been nice having you. And at this uh, point, I leave the floor for you to give us a freestyle uh, spoken <laughs> word and that will close the show for us. I think I should I should commend you. Uh, this is necessary and, and, and this is part of the interconnection that the new universe makes, makes possible, uh, making use of all of the fruits of human civilization, which is why we must, we, we must run away from any person who is trying to box us. Yes, we are Nigerians, we are Africans, we are proud of that. There is no other person that should be proud of the fact that we gave humanity human beings in the first, in the first instance. But nobody should use that as an instrument to deny us of all of the fruits of human civilization. We must employ them, all of the best possible from everywhere in the universe, appropriate them into our own society and, and, and push them forward. And strangely, science and technology is not developing here. The question of colonialism, the question of language are issues we also can't ignore. Nearly in all language on the African continent, the Bible and Quran are interpreted, but there are no science books in all of these languages. I can't, I, I speak Yoruba, I can't write it. I can't uh. write it effectively. These are all of the dangers. So when Afro-Americans tell us, or, or, or those in diaspora tell us of the damage slavery has done to them, colonialism, colonialism has done more damage to us as well 
We can't speak our language. All of us are running away from the continent. You know, we are cut off from the basis of even using our, our humanity, our own ideas to develop ourselves. All of this we must overcome. It was Franz Fanoff, you know, in his classic, Wretched of the Head, who gave clear analysis of how we have become aliens to our own culture on the basis of the kind of imposition that colonialism has imposed there on, a, on all of us. So the challenge I know most for all of us, we must study, we must read, we must advance and appropriate all instruments of civilization to advance our cause. And the best way I usually say this is to refer people to Wale Shrinka, Lion and the Jewel, the dispute between Lakuli and uh, Baruka. I don't know if you are familiar. Can we just have a spoken word so because we run out of time now. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much. Um, they are killing our dreams in every way, hey, 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 and every day, hey, 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 hey. They are killing our dreams, and every time we find a way, they come around against us because they don't want to pay for the suffering and fighting every day that the people have to face in every way. And when we turn the fire burn with body, for we no longer can hear the sound of the melody. They are killing our dreams in every way. Hey, 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 hey. And every day, hey, 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 hey. They are killing our dreams in every way. Hey, 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 hey. Remember Martin Luther, Malcolm Hex, Ken Sarawiwa, Delegiwa, Anikola Kutifela, Nelson Mandela. Then you know that not all dead people dream are dead. But you are alive without a dream in your head. How long? Will your own single life last? How long can we go on living without a reckoning of our past? Tomorrow could be too late for every existence as a date with death to keep. Now is not a time to sleep or slumber. Are they see? Are they see? Waiting them won't make my high. <laughs> no see. Are they see? Are they see? Every day my high they see. Are they see? Are they see? Waiting them won't make my high no see. Are they see? Are they see? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>